Pentecost and the Church of Holiness. Mm -hmm. We thank God you stopped back here for this worship experience. Mm -hmm. and thank God for you the membership as well. We honor you as well. Mm -hmm. God is good and good all the time. Amen. Yes, he is. Yeah. Yes, sir. God is still good. Yes. Yeah. I want to hold you long to get out of the way. Do what best said, Lord, and get out of the way. You be long. Saints who already talked about somewhat what the message is. I want to invite your attention to the scripture that Evangelist Wilson read, 1 Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19. Basis of our thinking, we want to just look at verse number four. And we'll go further. The Lord leads. The basis of our thinking will come from 1 Kings chapter 19, verse number four. <coughs> you don't have it, say, wait a minute. Here, life, we can throw 
you some blows yes. that can be very devastating to one as they walk. I heard in the Sunday school said, I don't want it. And when you're going through, hear me, when you're going through, you don't want to feel better. You don't even want to do better. And you get all the encouragement from fellow laborers. But because of the oppression that you're going through, you don't want to feel better. I may throw myself in here a minute, maybe. If God says so. And so this is what was going on. First of all, before I get back to verse number four, there before the previous verse, verses before that, there was a woman by the name of Jezebel. And if I go to verse chapter 18, there was a showdown at Mount Malcolm. With the prophets of Baal and Elijah. And Elijah gave the prophets of Baal first opportunity to show who Baal was. Baal did not show up, nor did he show up. The prophet of Baal cried all day long to Baal, and Baal did not answer them. One translation who made fun of him said, why don't you call it a little louder because maybe he's at the restroom. That's one translation. And so they, they called to the point where they began to cut themselves. And Elijah said, well, okay, it's my turn. Bible says Elijah cut bullocks, dug trenches, and all poured water in the trenches, and began to call on the true and living God. Yes. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Yes. And God, the living God, showed up and he showed out. The Bible says he sucked up the water, had fire going on, and all of a sudden, those prophets of Baal. Look real crazy. And all of a sudden, so all those prophets that were like that, they begin to die. I'm going to go, I'm just doing real fast, because I got a whole lot I got to cover in a short period of time to show what this theme of I had enough. And so all Jezebel got upset at Elijah. And so Eli Jezebel said to send a message to Elijah, said, by this time, you're going out of here. So in verse number three, Elijah ran for his life. And he left his servant at Bathsheba. Stay right here. And in verse number four, he left and went a day's journey into the wilderness. Now let me show y'all something. He ran to the wilderness. He ran from Jezebel, a woman. He runs from her because he does not want to die by Jezebel. Watch the text, it's in the folds. He goes to day's journey and sat down under the broom tree or the juniper tree. It's really kind of like a bush, y'all. It's kind of like a bush. He fled from Jezebel to preserve his life, choosing not to die at her hands. <laughs> Yet he was desirous to die at the hands of the Lord. And in place of his death, in a place where no one knew if he would die, they would know where he's at. They would not know where he died anywhere because he went out in a desert, a day's journey. And he said to himself, it's enough now. I done had enough. Jezebel's after me. I'm going through all this disaster and all this. She wants to take my life. So I done had enough, Lord. Take my life. 
He says, Suppose, listen to this, I want to tell you something, you're going to be encouraged in the Lord. He says, Suppose his service and usefulness were at an end. He thought he had done enough. He got discouraged. He got depressed. And he desired to die. I am no better than my fathers or my ancestors. And when he talks about fathers and ancestors, he's talking about Job, who wanted to die. He's talking about Jonah, who wanted to die. He said, I'm no better than him. Hmm. Verse number five says that he fell asleep. Why did he go to sleep? He was talking. He went, he went a day's journey. He wasn't in a car, y'all. He was not in a car. He was on foot. He didn't ride a horse. He was on foot a day's journey. So he was exhausted from the day's journey. So he lied asleep under a juniper tree, being weary and fatigued with his journey. Suddenly, the angel, see, uh, can I just tell y'all something? Let me, let me, let me back to the verse, verse four again, just for a moment. I want you some statistics before I go back to find it. As I said earlier, suicide is on the right. Young people are under peer pressure. Young people are being bullied. And so they said, what's the use? I just might as well take my life. Pressure. Uh, I was talking to uh, a young lady that came to prayer Tuesday night and was stressed over under the, the stuff at school. Not high school, but college. Uh, the pressure of maintaining uh, appropriate grade, especially those who are under scholarship, because you have to maintain a certain GPA to keep your scholarship. She went on and told me, and said, and I'm going to need help, that she's under stress and said, just wear me out. And I begin to encourage her, you can make it with the Lord's help. Now, not only are youth and young adults under stress and pressure, but adults, older folk are under pressure of life itself. Amen. How am I going to make ends meet? How am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to make it? How am I going to do it? And the thing that they come up with is I just might as well take my life to end it all and I wouldn't worry about this no more. The devil is alive. It is now coming to the pulpit. Preachers, pastors who are committing suicide is on the rise. The stress of pastoring and leading people and, and the stuff you got to go through as a pastor, they said, if what's the use? I done had enough. And they take their lives. I read an article just a few days ago. A prominent pastor had three boys, a great marriage. But because of the pressure of passion, he took his life. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, his, his children were like 12, 10, and maybe 5, somewhere in that neighborhood. And a wife he leaves behind because he said that's enough. People, the devastation, and you all talked about it, so I'm going to talk about it now. Devastation of you leaving a love, losing a loved one. Is devastation. And everybody who goes through it is different. Let me give you an analogy. Let me give you this is true. Ain't no analogy. This is true. The difference, me and my brother Randall have, are going through the same brain, except he's went through it longer. And we have we have we handled it differently. Same situation, but we're handling it different. Can I just tell y'all be real with y'all? I ain't as strong as y'all think I am. It's only God that's keeping me. And I tell people that if it wasn't for God, I'd be in a white jacket. 
in a padded cell because this thing ain't, 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 ain't it's crazy. Let's say that thing. And I'm just to be transparent. And one of the reasons why it's different from me than him, he still got, where she at? That's just To lawyer in the house. It helps. I don't have David in the house. It's different. And when you by yourself, and you see all the stuff that's in the house, that's in the memories of the house, and who's in the house, it's devastating. And I'm going to be transferred again because you go through this stuff so badly and, and, and dramatically, you don't want to live either. Okay. I've been there. And I told him, well, you know, what's the use? She's gone. I'm going to be transparent, okay? I'm trying to help somebody. What's the use? My best friend. Who I can share anything with is gone. Who can I share it with now? Besides God. Devastation. But I'm going to tell y'all something. There's hope. In the midst of how I felt, there is hope. Depression had set in. The pastor called them him baptized, spent the total church of holiness. Depression had set in. Didn't want to go any further, go to a friend, go. Didn't want to, didn't want to feel better. Some of y'all been there. Did you know what? I didn't want nobody to talk to me. That's how bad depression has set in. But there is hope. Yes, yes. And I'm going to show you the same, almost the same thing happened to Elijah. Almost happened to me. I didn't get no bread and water. Though. But God set me in my house, in my living room. So there is hope. Listen to this. I got more for you to do. You can't give up. And then I can't tell y'all this. This is between me and her. But before she passed, there's something she told me. And it resonated with me even a few days ago. Along with God and what she said motivates me to keep going. So let's go to verse 5 again. I thought I shared it with you. It's all right. It's all right. Because Elijah was depressed and wanted to die. And let me tell y'all something. And because he felt that he was the only one. I'm going back to that in a minute. He felt he was the only one. And so, let me tell y'all something. You need to have somebody, even though you don't feel like talking to nobody, because there's somebody to talk to you anyhow. Get up, shake yourself. Dust yourself off. I don't care what you don't want to hear. You won't hear me today. You need somebody in your life. Elijah had nobody in his life. But I'm going to tell you something. When nobody is in your life, God is going to be in your life. It's, and it's going to be the text. It's going to be the text. Help me, Holy Ghost. He lies down and sleeps under a juniper tree or a broom tree. From fatigue of the journey. And suddenly God sends a word. He's touched on his, suddenly sends an angel and touches Elijah. <laughs> Rise up, me. God ain't gonna let you die. Oh, come on, somebody. God ain't gonna let you die. Get up and eat. Watch this, verse 6. Then he looked, and there was by his hand a king. 
baked on coals or hot stones. And once he's at a job, that he, he's in a desert, y'all. In a desert. There's no food in the desert. And there's no, there's no job in the desert. When God wants you to do something, he's going to make the impossible possible. He sets him up with some food, a cake on hot stones, and a jar. I just let me translate. This is let me just translate in my mind. A big giant sized mason jar with water in it. It says jar water. In the New King James. So he did eat and he did drink. Now watch this. In verse 4, he desires to die. Verse 5, he walks in obedience. Because if he stayed in that same mindset in verse 4, I mean, I already told God I want to die. But God sent an angel and his whole mindset changes. He lies down and goes to sleep. Again. Verse 7. And the angel came back again. You ain't had no food yet, man. You ain't had no eat yet. You ain't had no eat. So he said this. He arose. Verse 8. He arose and ate and drank and went in his own strength. 40 days, 40 nights. The food stricken him for 40 days and 40 nights. He only ate twice. He only ate twice and he was on a journey for 40 days and 40 nights. And the Bible says he went in the strength of the food 40 days and 40 nights. <laughs> and he said, as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. I will ask the text question, what does it mean when he says the mountain of God? Well, that's where God appeared to Moses in the burning bush. And here's one, that's where God gave the law to Moses. Really what it says Horeb, really is Mount Sinai. It's really Mount Sinai. That's where all those events happened. The burning bush, uh, the, 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 the commands, the law was at Mount Sinai. And they called it the mountain of God. Mm. Verse number 9, I'm coming home. I'm going to show you something. You still got hope. He started to go, and there he went into a cave. And he was not told to go to the cave. He was obedient in the food, but then he got to the cave and spent a night in that place. And behold, God didn't want to let you go out of the cave. Because really, he went in the cave, he thought he was going to hide from God. He forgot, and I'm going to show you some other stuff, but I don't have enough time. Watch this. He thinks he can hide from God in the cave. He fails to realize, he forgets really, because he knew who God was. He forgets that God is all-knowing and all-seeing. Yeah. <laughs> and behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said to him, What are you doing here? I want you to see something. He said, What are you doing here? Elijah. He, he calls Elijah's name out because what, what, if he said, what are you doing here? It could be anybody. Yeah. He said, I'm calling you out. What he said. I'm calling you out, Elijah. What are you doing here, Elijah? Hmm. Because what he said, which one he said, he said, because i got more work for you to do. You're not going to die. You want to die. You're under pressure. You're under stress. And all of this is going on in your life, but you 
are not going to die. I got more work for you to do. All right, all right. You got you got more. You have more service to God. You have more service to God's people. You are not going to die. But watch. He's still trying to weasel out of it. In verse number ten. He's still trying to weasel out of it. And he said, Elijah, he talks about the way his past history. God don't care about your past history. He looking for your future. Yeah. Yeah. Past history, he said, he said, I've been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel, he's going to tell me. <laughs> like God didn't know. For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, your agreement, tore down their altars, and killed your prophets with a sword. And I'm alone left. No, you're not alone. I'm going to show y'all who he is. Not alone. He feels like it. When you in depression, you feel alone. You feel all alone. And can I tell you something? You can be around a whole lot of people and you still feel alone. When depression hits and sets in, you can be around a whole crowd of people and still feel all alone. That's right. All alone, he tells. They tore down and killed the prophet's sword. I'm left alone. And they seek my life. But I'll tell you something. God is not alone. God has a future for your life. I don't care how devastating your life is, and I don't care what the devil has been feeding you in your mind. That God has given you hope, and you do hope. hope, that hope. I'm going to show you, that's why he couldn't die. He had an assignment. His assignment was not over yet. Mm -hmm. His assignment was not over. I think they got the things that uh, the best is yet to come. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you worried about this woman, Elijah, but, but I am God and God all by myself, and you are not going to die. I got a greater work for you to do. The Bible says that in verse 15, God says, go back, return back to the wilderness in Damascus. Go back. Don't see that. It's not that young. <laughs> go back to Damascus and you shall. <laughs> when you arrive there, you shall anoint Hazel, the king over Syria. Verse 16, not only that, but you shall anoint Jehu. You should anoint him king over Israel. And then you should anoint prophet Elijah. Who shall, watch this, who shall in time take your place? I want to show y'all something. <laughs> Verse 17 says, It shall be that when whoever escapes the sword of Hazel, Jehu, will kill. Whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elijah will kill. Watch what God said. God said, you, you got to know him for a purpose. Because the enemy is not going to escape. They may escape one, but they will go down. They may escape them, but they will go down. I need you to get up, get some food in you, and go to Brody, Jay, Jonathan, because you have a mission. The best is yet to come. It ain't over that the second world says, it ain't over the fat lady says. Come on, somebody. Y'all say y'all again. It's not over. I don't care how bad it looks. It's not over till God says it's over. Uh, God is saying to us, even under the stress situation, God said, I still have hope for your life and the future. Come on, Jeremiah 29 and 11. It is not a disaster nor a catastrophe. I give you hope. Set the Lord. Yes. I don't care how bad it is. I don't care how many tears you have shed. God said, I got hope for you. Yes. Amen. Uh, verse 18. That's on that. Verse 18, and I'm coming home. God, God, God starts to show Elijah some things. And when he thought he was the only one left, <laughs> you ain't by yourself. You may look like you're by yourself. It may seem like you're by yourself, but you're not by yourself. Hear what God says. God says, yet, 